Hey everybody, thank you all so much for tuning on in. Today we're going to be talking about three national labs I've worked at, what's good about them, what's bad about them, and why you might want to work there or why you might not want to work there. Specifically, we're going to be talking about Oak Ridge National Lab, Los Alamos National Lab, and Sandia National Labs. We'll get right to it. Hope you enjoyed the video. Okay, so the first national lab that I want to talk about is Oak Ridge National Lab. So this was the first place that I did any technical work. Prior to that, I was sealing driveways, mending fences, and uh, digging ditches, quite honestly. Yeah, I was going in with a, a shovel and into a big muddy trench. And I'm glad that I'm, I'm not doing that kind of work anymore. But the first place I did real technical work was Oak Ridge National Lab. Um, it was good. It was a good place to start. It was just down the road from UT, and we'll talk a little bit about that later. But um, I guess more specifics on, on the lab itself. I guess the culture there is more of a general science lab, right? They're not aiding and supporting any particular mission. That's in contrast to something like Los Alamos or Livermore or Sandia, where they are primarily focused on one particular mission. It's just general science uh, that includes supercomputing. They have the fastest super fastest computer in the world, or they did, they go back and forth with other people. Every two or three years, it seems like they, they come up with the fastest computer in the world. So supercomputing is big, and they like you to use uh, that computer for, for computational sciences. So, you know, simulations of stars, simulating proteins, folding and unfolding, that kind of thing. Another thing that makes ORNL unique is, is the collaboration with, with uh, UT. Um, and that, that, that's kind of a, a blessing and a curse. The, the blessing is you're right there. The curse is it's hard to leave. And the current director now, when he had just become the director, said no more UT students. Or rather, we're not going to hire any UT postdocs if they did their PhD at UT and ORNL. I was falling into that camp, so I decided to leave. Beyond that, I guess the other thing about uh, ORNL is you get to do some fun experiments. They beyond uh, Titan or Summit or whatever supercomputers hidden in the, the building in the main quad. Beyond that, they have this Galatian neutron source, which is good for high energy physics experiments, and it, it's open to the public. If a team from Norway or Sweden or Switzerland wants to do an experiment, they can request beam time, and they sometimes they get it. I think you might have to pay. It's a general science lab. They do expect you to have a PhD to move on. They're not as emphatic as Los Alamos is. Enough about uh, Oak Ridge specifically. I'm going to talk a little bit more about Knoxville. So if you're a UT student, you're probably going to have a different lens than somebody moving to Knoxville to work, to work at ORNL. Um, Knox, it's relatively cheap. Um, I don't think it is as cheap as Albuquerque. One thing about the commute to ORNL from the general locale, it's pretty bad. I remember I was trying to get back downtown to Knoxville from ORNL. Um, it's a, supposed to be a 23, 24 mile drive, right? So you think, okay, well, you average 46 miles an hour, right? You'll get there in 30 minutes, right? Is that right? But it took me over an hour to drive those 23 miles back home. Um, and traffic is, is bad. The commute is not good, and there's not really an alternative way. You can take the bus, but that takes forever. An upside to Knoxville is the fact that it has a strong running community. I, I love each of them dearly. I hope they remember me. But uh, yeah, the Knoxville Track Club is great. They might be uh, a little bit crazy at times, but you know, great running culture, great running community there. I like to run, so I'm a little bit biased, and that's kind of a specialty area. Beyond that, downtown Knoxville is pretty cool. Compared to Santa Fe or Albuquerque or downtown Livermore or downtown Idaho Falls, as far as just hanging out and doing cool stuff, downtown Knoxville is fun. I, I'm a little bit biased because go Vols. Yeah, as, as far as cool little coffee shops and the, just the decor of the city, it, it's, it's second to none. I, I love that place. Then the last thing, uh, well, two more things. The vicinity of Knoxville is, is pretty cool as well. It's two and a half hours, maybe three hours to Lexington, three and a half hours to Atlanta, maybe two hours to Asheville, three hours to Nashville, two hours to Chattanooga. You're close to a lot of cool cities. So if you ever get sick of Knoxville, you know, you just bop over to another one. 
Now, uh, I'm not a big fan of Nashville, but, you know, that's my opinion. But you're close to a lot of things. Uh, I will mention that if you don't have a car, you're kind of dead in the water. Uh, it's just the way the Southeast is set up and they're, they're kind of stuck in their ways of having to drive a car everywhere. They don't think, well, what if you build a train? What if you build a bus? What if you build, you know, what if we build some bike lanes? They want to drive their cars and park everywhere, which isn't fun. If you do have a car, you can get to other cities and I think you can take a Greyhound. Last thing about Knoxville, um, I guess area surrounding Oak Ridge in general, while the downtown itself is pretty cool, I will say you venture 15 or 20 minutes out of the city um, and you'll find some folks that maybe aren't the most educated but they do vote and they vote for politicians that don't make the wisest decisions and that's something that uh, I really also wanted to get away from and that's why I don't another reason why I don't live there stereotypes you think of the south come a little bit more true as you, as you head out to more rural areas outside of those cities and like I said, all those people vote, and they vote for politicians that don't make good decisions, in my opinion. That's kind of a downside. But anyway, that's all I have to say about ORNL and, and Knoxville, so we'll move right on to the next one. Okay, so the second lab I want to talk about is Los Alamos National Lab. I was there from June of 2019 until January of 2021. Like the other national labs, it was born in the 1940s, but it is unique in that uh, J. Robert Oppenheimer uh, was the first lab director. If you don't know who he is, just look him up and what he was famous for is kind of what's still going on there today and that's kind of what their main focus still is. I'm not going to mention it in this video, but uh, I'll put some links in the description. As far as culture at Los Alamos, it's the lab I think that requires a PhD. If any lab requires you to finish your PhD to advance, it's gonna be Los Alamos. There are some engineering jobs, but by and large, the culture there is very much go out, get your own funding. That being said too, because so many people have their own funding, the lab almost lends itself to a culture of do whatever you want. Computer security is very lax. My first day, one of the guys down the hall handed me a thumb drive. So thumb drives are controversial, problematic, but he said, here, you know, why would you run uh, Red Hat? Just run Ubuntu. I, I wrote part of it. Any flavor of Linux that you want to run, I think you have to run a, a, a daemon on top for them to monitor, but by and large, you got carte blanche to run whatever the heck you want, and they just kind of trust you not to mess things up. There's been flukes in the past among the other national labs. Los Alamos sort of had a, has a reputation of being a little bit sloppy, and um, I, I can kind of concur. That being said, as far as carte blanche to do whatever you want, I think that's the place to do it. More about the culture at Los Alamos. I will say there's a certain amount of social competence that it takes to navigate the world. There is an elevated fraction of people at Los Alamos that lack that certain social competence. It's a very isolated town, and as a result, you know, there's primarily scientist types that live there. My first mentor, or first two mentor, I guess it was a team of two, they were great. They were, they were phenomenal. Just easy to talk to about life, you know, always, always willing to give feedback, very easy to get a hold of. And then of course, as 20, 2020 hit, uh, I had to change mentors and the next mentor, he, uh, he was impossible to talk to. I remember when I met him for the first time, I reached out, you know, tried to shake his hand, and he was like, he, he didn't understand what was going on, and I clearly had my hand outstretched. Um, asked, you know, I finally had to ask him, you know, do you want to shake my hand? And there's, there's a lot of folks like that up in Los Alamos. If you can deal with it, great. Um, if you can't, welcome to my world. One of the reasons why I left. Okay, so talking about living in Santa Fe or Los Alamos, or for that matter, Española. Compared to the other two places in this video, it's expensive. Los Alamos is very expensive and it's about impossible to find housing up there. A lot of houses are overlooking canyons and cliffs, and but it's very, very expensive. Uh, Santa Fe is also very, very expensive. There's a little bit more housing there, but the commute each way, it will be at least, at least 40 minutes door to door 
probably closer to 50 or 55. It's a 40 some odd mile drive from Santa Fe to Los Alamos National Lab. And then there'll be days, especially in the summertime when there's more people there, where you can't leave. If you're trying to go back to Santa Fe or Española or anywhere, if you're trying to get out of Los Alamos, you can't. You're gonna be sitting in traffic for 40 minutes before you, know, you make that 40 minute drive home. So the commuting is absolutely atrocious. With remote work, I think that might change a little bit or that might have changed a little bit, but you know, by and large, you're either gonna be paying out the nose to live in Los Alamos or still paying a whole lot of money to live in Santa Fe. It, it, it's not a good, good situation as far as living or commuting. I guess your third option may be living in Española. It, it's kind of a rougher town. They have a lot of fun, but it, it's, a, it's a rougher town. And even still from there, it, it's a 30 or 40 minute commute, assuming that you don't hit traffic. One positive, though, about uh, if you live in Los Alamos, well, you're close to a ski hill, for one. You're close to the Jemez Mountains. There's a lot of outdoor stuff sort of just right in your backyard. They, the county, the property taxes are high, probably why it's expensive to live there, but they do maintain a, a nice network of trails. So outdoor stuff is, is pretty cool. The school system is great if you have a family. I don't. I guess talking a little bit more if you live in Santa Fe, which a lot of people do, that. Uh, work at Los Alamos. I'm not a fan of that town either. I sort of dogged Tennessee specifically, you know, outside of Knoxville. If you I said, you know, you find a lot of folks that, that don't make politically wise decisions when they go to the ballot box. I feel like you kind of have the same thing in Santa Fe, but it's the opposite end of the political spectrum. The nimbyism is real, let me put it that way. They just need to build more housing, they need to build more transit, they just need to build more, but everybody's reluctant to build any kind of dense housing. And if you want to get something built, it takes forever because there are so many regulations. It's kind of like California. When you can't build anything, you can't go anywhere. That cost of housing goes up and they can't build any infrastructure. I was sort of frustrated by Santa Fe in that regard. That being said, it's a beautiful town. There's, if you have money, there's a lot to do. I will say the dating scene in both Santa Fe and Los Alamos and for that matter, Española are not great if you're in your 20s. And meeting people in Santa Fe is not really easy. Most of the folks you meet are gonna be older. It's like a retirement town. I kind of call it, you know, Gatlinburg for the wealthiest 0.2% of Americans. You don't see a lot of young people. That's just the nature of it. Closing remarks about Los Alamos too. I mentioned earlier that there's a lot of like socially inept people in Los Alamos, the whole town feels a little bit socially inept. There used to be only one grocery store there. I think they opened up an organic grocers. So now there's two grocery stores there. But by and large, you can't escape your work if you live in Los Alamos. You see people that you work with at, your, at the one grocery store. You see people you work with running the same trail. You see people you work with skiing at the ski mountain 10 minutes from the town. It, it's sort of like a combination between the D.C. area, Silicon Valley, and Aspen, Colorado. Works well for some people. I wasn't a fan, but if you have a family, I think it works, works well for you. That's all I have to say. We'll move on to the next one. Okay, so the third lab in my journey is Sandia National Lab. The culture at Sandia is very much an engineering lab, whereas ORNL and Los Alamos they tend to be more science labs, right? Sandia is definitely an engineering lab. They put a lot more emphasis on fix the problem, you know, solve the problem, rather than science labs where it's, you have to propose what you're gonna research and it might pan out, it might not. At, at Sandia, it's your, your sponsor will come to you. And they'll say, hey, we have this problem. We need you to fix it. I'm more apt for that, uh, that, that type of work culture and that work style. Some people, you know, they like just investigating things rather than solving problems. I'm not that person, but to each their own. So more to that point too, the science labs tend to put a little bit more emphasis on, on completing your PhD. That's not the case as much at Sandia. They want to see that you have a graduate degree, so normally it's just a Master of Science. But if you don't finish your PhD, it's not the end of the world. There are some groups where they do pure research at Sandia, but it's not most of the lab like it is at Los Alamos or Livermore, Oak Ridge, Idaho, wherever you may be. To me, that you know, that's nice too because I didn't get to finish. We can talk a little bit more about that in a different video. Let's see, beyond that, there's less emphasis on finishing a PhD, but there might be a little bit more emphasis on, on 
professional engineering licensure. Getting credentialed that way has a little bit more weight at Sandia compared to the other national labs. The last thing at Sandia compared to the other labs, it seems like travel is more frequent across the entire lab. I hear a lot about a lot more employees having to travel frequently just to do their jobs. If you like to travel, I do, maybe Sandia is the place for you. So the next thing we need to talk about is, is the locale. It's not Knoxville, it's not Santa Fe or Los Alamos, it's not Livermore, California, it's not Idaho Falls. This is Albuquerque. There are benefits and, and drawbacks to every locale and Albuquerque is no exception. First thing about it is Albuquerque is a cheap place to live. It, I, that's good and bad. This apartment right here, um, I think it's right around a thousand square feet, maybe, I, I don't know. I pay about 850 each month after you know, water and electricity and, and stuff. And it's it's pretty nice apartment. I get a pool, um, it's safe. I just still do hear hootlums, you know, revving up their engines at night, but I mean, that's, that's part of living here. But by and large, you know, there's no, nobody's getting shot outside my window. Other parts of town, namely the International District, colloquially referred to as the war zone. There's a little bit more violent crime down there. I think we've hit our hundredth homicide for the year in this city. So there are very rough patches here. You, you're not going to find that in Los Alamos or Livermore. Uh, East Knoxville, kind of, but I mean, if you're at ORNL, you're, you're probably living in West Knoxville. So it is cheap rougher town, but it's cheap. Um, there is a lot to do around here as far as hiking, running, mountain biking, the whole nine yards. There's plenty of trails and there's uh, there's plenty of stores. It's not just like there's, there's two or three grocery stores. There's plenty of grocery stores, plenty of ways to get to work too. There's lots of transportation options. So you can take the bus, you can ride your bike. The secondary streets are great for bikes, I think. They're not perfect, but they're, they're, they're pretty good. Plenty of sidewalks. Some of the main streets are a little bit busy, but I mean, I had to carry a car battery like a mile to AutoZone to get it recharged. And you know, it was kind of down a busy road, but by and large, the sidewalks are wide enough to where it's not really too much of an issue. There are plenty of folks around here, but it's not like your typical big city. It still is New Mexico. Generally, folks around here are gonna be a little bit more reserved. One thing I like to say is folks, they're not gonna hang out if there's more than five people, generally. It's a pretty introverted state. So like you'll see two or three people out biking or two or three people out running, but you don't ever see groups of more than five folks. You know, five, four or five people running together is kind of a rarity. People just like their space and they like uh, engaging with people individually rather than in a group. And that's kind of a double-edged sword. I mean, you don't have like group drama because Boopsy doesn't like Becky or something like that. There's, there's never any drama. But also the downside to that is you know, in large groups, you can get to know a lot of people very quickly, and that's not the case when folks don't hang out in large groups. Last thing, as far as Albuquerque, I uh, want to talk about is, is, is the dating scene here. I'm a little bit weird, right? I'm not the smoothest uh, strip of sandpaper in the box. That being said, I enjoy the dating scene in Albuquerque. There's plenty of folks in their 20s who are looking to do everything from, you know, just get coffee to, you know, look for a serious relationship to looking to get married. I, I like dating in Albuquerque. I'll just say that. So that's third national lab I've, I've worked at. We'll wrap this thing on up. So that wraps up the video. We've talked about all three. Really appreciate you tuning on in. Um, if you're considering employment at any of the three, hope this sort of helps you narrow things down. The final closing remarks I want to make as far as uh, Oak Ridge, you got to remember in Tennessee that there is no state income tax, but they'll get you at the grocery store. They'll get you when you register your car. Um, everything else is more expensive. The only two taxes that are low in Tennessee are income tax and gasoline tax. Beyond that, you've heard about all three. Everywhere is a little bit different. If you like a, a broad range and don't mind the commute, maybe Oak Ridge is the place for you. If you like sort of being independent and doing your own thing and you know, maybe you've got your family and maybe you're sort of already established. Maybe Los Alamos is a place for you. And then if you're young like me and sort of like running around and seeing young people and kind of getting into debauchery, Sandia down in Albuquerque is the place for you. I haven't talked about any of the other ones because I don't really think my opinion is worth very much considering I haven't worked there. So I haven't covered Livermore in California, hadn't covered Idaho National Labs up in Idaho, hadn't covered Fermilab or Ames or... Brookhaven or anyway, I hope hope this helps you with your decision and maybe you're just curious heading on out. So I'll catch y'all in the next video. Really appreciate you watching. Over and out.